and some of them do not. I remember that guy from last night. Because I gave him a special nickname. Hello, everyone. Hi. And welcome to this ridiculous panel. We don't even know what it is. Uh, I don't, anyway. The point being, uh, the, the name of it is what? Extemporaneous blabbering? Extemporaneous The art of conversation? Uh, it is, in case you were wondering, what I, I kind of mentioned to uh, Tatum before we walked in. It's kind of what we do all the time anyway. Uh, which is go in and make things up. Uh, but in a conversational way, you know? And, and we have, every now and then, we have panels where there are questions and, and, and things like that. But we're, we're going to give some examples, we'll say, today. Uh, sure we are. I didn't come prepared. I just made it up. You see what I did there? I just made up something we're going to oh, do. Oh, it's different. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, yeah. see, I he gets it. He gets it. Um, so, uh, as an example, let me see. What, let me think of what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take this microphone. And I'm going to pick someone that I don't know, which is most of you. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> um, you look bored. Why don't you come up here? <laughs> Get the blood flowing a little bit. I, I couldn't help but notice when he said you look bored, you just kind of went, yeah. <laughs> Body of your phone is an element in conversation. So thank you for coming up. I'm, I'm Jerry. It's nice to meet you. You may have noticed a little thing that just happened there. I stuck out my hand, and she grabbed it. I know, you're laughing, but it's, it's, it's the beginning. That's my way in, you see. Hello, how are you? And she's like, oh, I'm <laughs> That's the beginning. Uh, may I ask your name, please? Sam. Her name is Sam. <laughs> Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. Now, did you see? Did you see how the audience initiated saying hello? Don't let them do that next time. You you do it first. You do it first. Yeah. It makes you look gracious. This is your conversation. Yes, this is your conversation and my conversation. Mostly my conversation because I, I, I'm in control of the microphone. Uh, Tatum has a microphone. He can jump in at any time. He's very good at this game. But I love this. He, but he loves this. I'm watching every moment of Sam and Jerry. Yes, Sam and Jerry. Uh, so, uh, what, do you, what do you do besides come to anime conventions? Uh, I'm just a student. I don't do much. Just a student. That's a pretty loaded statement. Like, you're just a student. Just a student. What are you a student of? What Michael just did is the natural next step <laughs> in a conversation. I point, point out, out a flaw. Point out a flaw and then ask for more information. Thereby engaging Sam in conversation. <laughs> so, what what are you studying? Uh, French teaching. There you go. <laughs> now I have a follow-up question. She has a follow-up. From the very simple French teaching. What do you mean by French teaching? <laughs> teaching French, the French language, or teaching French people? <laughs> one lesson ahead of the student. <laughs> Plus, I believe the word no translates into just about every language. No. 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 So, so how long have you been studying French? Another question. Uh, like, just university or like... like so you studied it in... in in whatever you studied it in. What are they, is it still high school here? Do they call it high school? <laughs> you studied it in high school for how many years? High school is four years. Is it? So all four years. You didn't like in the second year go, I think I want to study French. No, okay. Uh, how do you say, I studied French for four years in high school? Uh, 
Good. That was awesome. Uh, now we transition into conversation in French. I'm kidding. We're not going to do that. Um, I'm pretty sure we should not do that. Um, however, uh, do you enjoy it? She enjoys it, you guys. Yay for enjoying French. Uh, are there any Are there any questions you have for Michael or myself? She's bad at conversation. <laughs> she, it seems she has to be prompted uh, in order to do anything. Uh, and it seems like you're not really engaged with talking to us at all. Uh, not to be rude, but it just seems like you just don't care. Uh, you're not into us. You, do you know how many of these other people are going, oh, I have something I want to talk to them about. <laughs> but, but no, you're just... In... I am, it's that spot, right there. <laughs> But that's no. what conversation is. That is what conversation is. It's your spot. Yes. Own it. You're the other part. You're the other part of the conversation. I will hand it to you. Here, it's your turn. Wait, wait, no. We can both have, we can both have a microphone. We're equals now. Oh, you need to be on? <laughs> so, what, you, what, you want me to talk for you, too? <laughs> Oh, we have someone on the case. Yes. Oh! I got a microphone. You do? Okay. Uh, well, since I actually don't know much about any of you... <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. We knew nothing about her. And now we know that she studied French for four years in high school. You see, we're learning. We're having an experience here, you guys. Yes. Right. So how long have you been going in your careers? Uh, I'm not sure I'm going now. <laughs> uh, I, I may be ruining it this very second. Uh, <laughs> I, I, have been, I have been dubbing at Funimation since 2001. So for those of you keeping count, that is 17 years. Woo! Woo! Older than some of you. Oh. I have been dubbing with Funimation since 2005, so that is 13 years. Not quite as important sounding as 17, <laughs> but still, <laughs> it's, a lame it's still a long time. It's so much closer to 20. I sometimes go really to 15 just because it sounds better. My <laughs> career can almost drink. <laughs> I can already drink, but my career. <laughs> my career shouldn't even stay home alone. <laughs> my career drinks alone. <laughs> That's a dangerous thing. Your career hangs outside of liquor stores <laughs> and asks older careers to go in and buy alcohol for it. Waiting for people to drop change. <laughs> um, well, Sam, I, I, I think... I think we've learned how to break the ice now, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Everybody yeah. feel like they have a, a handle on this? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Let's pick some other people. Oh, right. Uh, let's have a round of applause for Sam, everybody. You did great. Well, I mean, you don't have to give up the mic, but it's going to feel really awkward here pretty soon. <laughs> okay. Thank you. And thank you for participating. Mercy, buddy. Mercy Buckets, Madam Wassel. Who should we pick now? Uh, we should pick... Uh, see, I don't want to pick people that want to be picked. <laughs> yeah, because it's kind of learning. It's like it's we like, want to help they're obviously guys. already very good at this. Yeah. Um, they want to but she, doesn't, she clearly doesn't want to do it because someone else is volunteering her. Uh, let's bring her up. I'm for that. Yeah. Right, well, let's do that. <laughs> yeah, come on down. I'm just afraid if I sit down, I'm going to fall asleep. There you go. Michael's going to join us down here. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. Uh, what is your name? I'm Jenny. Hi, Jenny. That's close to Jerry. <laughs> Except the R's are cut off. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll believe you. <laughs> I'll, you don't have to, you can see it. Like if, you go to, if you go to a grade school, you'll see that the only difference is that the R is finished. With uh, I, I see where you're coming from now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we've been duped. <laughs> she 
she's, Jenny seems to be conversing quite well. She's participating uh, and at master level. <laughs> well, yeah, you're like inserting, like, yeah, we don't even need to prompt you. That's, this, is, this is pretty high level. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> may, I, uh, may I challenge you? I just, I want to challenge you. Pretend, oh, okay. why don't you start the conversation Ooh, like with this. myself and Jerry? Yes, yes. Just come up to us out of nowhere. You, you break the ice. So, oh, yes, my, Beautiful, but Jerry and I really had a good conversation. Oh, 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 voice acting, 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 voice Je m'appelle Jerry, et voici mon ami Michel. Michel. Oh. Uh, I speak English. Oh, okay. That's it. Okay. Est-ce que vous comprenez? I think you guys don't like me anymore. We love you. Are you we've only Well, I mean, you didn't shake my hand, Jenny. Oh. No, no. Uh, no, this is, real conversation. no, this is a really good point right here. This is a really good point. Granted, I offered my hand to her. Now, after I offered my hand to her, and she took it. Now, had she not taken it, it would have been a different story. But she did take it. It would have been polite to, for me, not for her, this is on me, this is all on me, for me to say, and did, well, I did in French, but that doesn't count. She didn't understand, she didn't understand it. You can't blame her for that. That was my faux pas. <laughs> a little more French there for you. And what I should have done is said, oh, and this is my friend Michael. And then it would have, it would have gone, you know. Right. Yeah. Because you see, the reason I didn't join in is because the two of you are having a conversation. There wasn't really a, a, a <laughs> obvious point for me to come in without kind of shoving him out of the way. So my job in that uh, scenario was to wait until you take the initiative to introduce me, or you take the initiative to introduce you that seat. But that, the point is, the polite thing is to not take the initiative if two other people are already in. Mm. Unless something's on fire, <laughs> yes. then all bets are off. Then, right. then we'll forgive you for being less than civil. So respect the entire conversation going on. Don't jump in and be the center of attention. Right. Well, we're not saying that. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. sure, sure. That we can make that a kind of hard and fast rule. Okay. I've learned something. Have you ever Have you ever been engaged in a conversation with someone and someone you don't know? just comes up and kind of stands on the outskirts and, and waits. Yes. And then, yes. They, then they interject themselves into your conversation and you go, who is this person? I have no idea. <laughs> but that has happened, correct? You know, no, and then maybe we see it happen, but a lot of people tend to just kind of sort of wait at the edge and then, you know, <laughs> sometime or another inappropriate closeness or That's who true. knows. <laughs> That, that is, so that's a challenge, isn't it? When, whenever you, there's someone you want to speak to and they are already engaged in a conversation and you don't know the other person, it's always harder if you don't know both people. If you know both people, you go, oh, hi, hi, hi. But when you are the initiator, mm -hmm. if I want to speak to Jerry, but you're having a conversation, yes. it's very rude for me to be like, hey, Jerry, how's it going? So I want to talk to you real quick. Pardon me, I was speaking with Jenny. So, my trick, for uh, insertion into this conversation without being rude, is to first introduce myself to the person that uh, that I don't know. It's a good idea. I already know Jerry. He's going to see me. No introduction necessary. So go ahead and talk. Hi, Jerry. How are you? I'm so far so good. So far. I tell I'm so you. sorry. Oh. Oh. Jerry, hey, how's it going? Hey, what's up? How are you? I'm sorry. My name is Michael. Hi, I'm Jesse. Nice to meet you. So Beautifully done, right there. Did you see that? Did you see that? Because then the other person. He already knows me, so there's no tension there. And now, I, he does not feel uh, slighted because I acknowledged her right out of the gate. And that is how you insert yourself into a conversation. Now, having said that, though, you do have to be aware of kind of tone and timbre and body language because if two people true. are having, for example, show us a frivolous conversation. <laughs> you don't have to have one. Just I know. <laughs> <laughs> then, then you wouldn't believe what he did. You'll no, notice. Not, 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 not. They're laughing, right. they're having a good time. Oh, 
in front of everybody. Oh, in fact, this might be a good place for me to Most kind of, of them politely guess. overhear something I funny and be like, ha, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but that was really funny, I agree. That's a great way to do it. But again, you're not interrupting anything that appears to be serious. Now, have a serious, like, have a hushed argument. Look, Jenny, I'm sick of you. Don't stir it here. This is how you would search yourself into that conversation. Oh, we're gonna end it, all right? Just leave it alone. Don't get it. You don't want to be a part of that. Good things are not gonna happen. Unless they look, unless one of them looks like they need to be saved. Right. That's a How might you do that? How might... Uh, save me from Jenny. Okay. <laughs> you guys, this you is cool. Alright. Don't teach you this is cool. You know, Tatum, I've walked down with you. I've been through this so many times before. You know, she does your response to everything. Oh, hey, Come hey, on. hey, hey, hey. Excuse me? Jenny, shut the fuck up! up. <laughs> Alright, we're not here for we're not doing that today. Cool? We cool? We're not doing that today? Oh, okay, we're cool. We're cool. We're not doing that. Alright, anyway. Now, you see how easy that was? <laughs> that was a good save. So that carry, was professional. carry a microphone around with you wherever you go. Because that gives you all the power in the world. That's all you need is a microphone. That's great. Mm -hmm. Uh, another option is to come up and be like, hey, Jerry, Grandma's on fire, we gotta go. <laughs> yeah. that, is, that is one. Uh, we'll, we'll give you a... a <laughs> only this room gets to know this, and please don't tell your friends. Um, voice actors do this all the time. <laughs> all the time. Whenever we see someone that it's like, that dude has been talking to him for ten minutes and shows no signs of slowing down. Uh, it's it's fine to walk by and go, hey man, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah, yeah, okay, please. Cool. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then we go away. I might add, it's usually me they're being saved from. <laughs> <laughs> or or you can uh, it it's okay to lie when you're trying to get a friend out of a conversation. <laughs> yes, it's so, you're lying in the interest of being polite. Say, hey, we're supposed to be at a panel like 10 minutes ago. Dude, I'm sorry, but we gotta go. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. And then you drag your friend off to get them out of there. Oh, make sure you have friends. <laughs> That's, I can't believe we forgot that. Make sure you have friends with you. When, huh? How? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, how? How? How, how do you have friends? We're, you started off with conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I would consider Jenny a friend. I like now. Jenny. Oh, good. I like, I you like Jenny. I like Jenny a she's lot. She's helpful. She's been very comfortable up here in, in the being on the spot, which is not everyone's cup of tea. No. Um, Public speaking, bad. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> it's, uh, I love it. works for me. I love public speaking more than I like talking one on one for this reason. When I'm in front of a room full of people and babbling bullshit, I can look at a sea of faces and know there's bound to be one person on my side. <laughs> one. But if there's only one person in front of you, it is all or nothing. <laughs> all or nothing. I can like somebody in here likes me. <laughs> Surely, law of averages. But if it's just one person, oh, too much. Too much pressure. Too much pressure. So Jenny, what do you like to do? Um. What are you into? What am I into? Um, I'm a veterinarian, so I really like animals. So sometimes you're into animals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literally. Literally into animals. Uh -huh. Definitely. That's good. See, you can always inject humor into a conversation, <laughs> right? 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 Well, she, she said I'm into animals, and I made a joke about being into animals. I'm sorry that that was the point of gesture I chose for. I don't think she's that into animals. Uh, <laughs> she's into animals. So, a veterinarian. A veterinarian. How long do you have to study to be a veterinarian? Um, Eight years of college, so four undergrad and four of the, uh... Oh, true. you really love animals. Really, do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what made you pursue that? Um, when I was a girl at, like, five or six, I loved them. And I said, well, you know, that's what I want to do as a career. And then I thought, well, I really don't like talking to people either. So I can talk to the animal, ignore the owner, and life will be good. And <laughs> until they tell me that, yeah, you need to deal with those crying people whose dog is dying or... They're mad at you because they don't have money and you need to be paid for stuff.
stuff. Um, and so there actually is a lot of human interaction that I never expected. I have mad respect for what you do because uh, from what little I know about, about the, the discipline is it's really a lot harder than just being a normal doctor, which is quite hard enough, because you are having to diagnose multiple species who cannot tell you what they feel. Very true. I mean, they either are going to love you or bite you, and then you've got your little areas of gray in between, so trying to figure out, is this really hurting, or are you just a mean son of a gun, sometimes can be pretty interesting. And yeah, cows, horses, dogs, cats, the occasional iguana, and ferrets, and all that good stuff. Um, now you will notice, in the course of our conversation, I knew just enough about just veterinary enough. medicine to make a comment that then got this whole narrative out of her. <laughs> we're having this conversation, which is good. So if you do find yourself talking, I'm not being absolutely serious, if you're talking to another person and you know a little bit about what they're talking about, enough to kind of say, oh, I, that's really cool. I've always heard that this has happened. Is that true? Like, you will get things out of them because people like talking about them. What they're into. What I would also, I would also like to point out that he started with a compliment and and uh, an empath empathetic statement, really. Um, and those are always good things to to use tools in your toolbox uh, because people automatically respond to them in a in a good way, you know, in a positive manner. Uh, because after that happened. Did you notice her response was like, boom, flawless? It, and it was just natural conversation. She's no longer shy about being up here. She's no longer shy about talking to anybody about anything. And that's ultimately what you're going for, is a real conversation with the real human being instead of, no, uh, today I'm going to be the girl that's embarrassed to be up here. No, you're not. You're going to be yourself, because that's what we're all here to be. True. Um, so show me real quick, because I, I, I'm fascinated by this. How many of you consider yourselves really bad or awkward in conversation with strangers? That's quite a bit of us. I'm, I can include myself, actually, in that. So do you find, as I do, that the driving force behind social anxiety is I'm just not interesting enough, and if I start talking, I'm going to look so much worse than the person I'm talking to, and they're going to be like, why am I wasting my time with you? We feel uninteresting and unimportant, right? No one cares. If you can spend your time making the other person feel interesting, that's how you engage. Notice, we didn't talk about ourselves. We're talking to Ginny. I want to know. She does this cool thing. And I'm like, tell me more. Is it true what I heard about this or whatever? And we're having this conversation. And Jerry pointed out how much more comfortable she is being on the spot because we gave it to her. We're like, you have a thing that I don't know about that I want to hear. Like, that. What do you do? What are your feelings on this thing that we, we know from the very little information we had? make you interesting. And because she feels interesting and paid attention to, she is interested in us, right? Very true. So don't think about, don't, whenever, whenever you have to talk to somebody, you know, so you're going to have to talk to people in life, that's just how it works. Unfortunately. It's difficult, but make the goal, don't try to be interesting. You don't have to be interesting, be interested and the other person will respond to it. That's why so many people don't do well in conversation is because they, they think all the, it's their responsibility to entertain the other person, and it's not. It's just your responsibility to listen, and they will return the favor and bring things out of you that you didn't think were there, and suddenly you'll find, oh, I'm more interesting than I thought, right? It's very true. It's an important tactic, so please remember that. When you talk to someone, go into it with an ear, not, not yes. just thinking of the things you have to say. Ask questions. Interested. It's so much more important than being interesting. Being interesting is eh. You either are or you aren't, depending on who you're talking to. There's nothing you can do about that. If I had no desire to learn any of my hate animals and thought veterinarians were a joke, I'd be out of this conversation. Because I'd be an asshole. Right. But that's not on Jenny. That's on me. She just had to be honest and tell me what was going on and I'm fascinated. Right, and even if you're not, you did an amazing job of pretending to be. Which, acting. Do do? <laughs> acting. There's always a little bit of acting involved in conversation. Because Everyone is an actor. It's not that you're lying, you just have to play different roles in different circumstances, because you are complicated, and different facets of your personality come out when you're talking to different people in different contexts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I'm talking to Tatum, I'm gay. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> That is how you insert yourself in and out of a conversation before the people you're talking to know what the fuck happened. <laughs>
I believe that was the Irish hello and goodbye. <laughs> Now, both of them, you seldom see them that close together, but that's how they were. Now, we already know those people, so there was a history there. If yes. Someone else did that now. They'll be like, whoa, 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 come back. What are we doing? <laughs> but that was acceptable. I, you should have gotten in the picture. I didn't see you I, in the picture. I, didn't I was rather, photobomb and be, you know, inappropriate. I was kind of sad that you were, it wouldn't have been Well, they were the ones photobombing us, really. Yes. <laughs> so they get what they get. Um, Yes, thank, thank you very much, Jenny. It was a pleasure. And thank you for taking care of our animals. Yes. It's a hard, hard, thankless job, and we love you for it. Jerry, do you want to pick someone? Do I? Pick someone. And how? See, there's another person showing too much enthusiasm. I have a question. You, he has a question? Yeah. All right. Yes. That's a good question. So, in the, like, in the art of conversation, when you're trying to initiate conversation, what if you run into someone that is very dry with their response? Like they obviously are not interested in the conversation or they don't want to interact back. Then you probably don't want to talk to them. <laughs> I mean, I know that sounds weird, and it's, but, but uh, sometimes you need to know how to get out of conversations too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, it may come up more often than you think. <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes if a person just doesn't want to talk to you, there's nothing you can do about that. I, I, it's I their recommend. choice. Yeah, it's their choice. And you don't know why. You don't know why they don't want to talk to you. I mean, it's, so it's important not to take it personally. Unless it's someone you know very well and they suddenly are a cold shoulder you, then that's like, whoa, what happened? What, why are we like this? But if it's some stranger, you're going to encounter that. Some people just don't want to engage. You don't know what their day's been like. Maybe they're just like, they have had the worst day of their life and they have to, if they have to utter one more word to anyone, they're just going to scream. So just you have to give them respect and go, oh, all right, cool, and just get out of it. Sometimes you have to look stupid. <laughs> Sometimes the only True. way to get out of an awkward situation is to just allow yourself to look like an idiot and be like, all right, well, life lesson, chalk it down, go. Uh, and that's you why I go into every situation looking as stupid as I can. Because <laughs> then I've, got, I've always got an exit. Always. It's liberating. Because you're like, I'm just going to, it's great. Because if I, like, no one's, it's not going to come out of nowhere. So I, I like to make fun of myself a lot. Jerry mm -hmm. does the mm -hmm. same thing. It's called self-deprecating humor. Um, it also puts the other person at their ease, especially what we do. I notice because you know we're here uh, to, to talk to fans, and fans will come up. And fans, uh, it's it's not that it's frustrating. It's an interesting interaction when a fan comes up to you. It's it's a little hard to make that connection sometimes because they're too busy talking to Jay Michael Tatum to just talk to Michael. And it can be, I understand it's part of the job and you know we don't know each other and all that and you feel it as a disadvantage, but sometimes it can be difficult. And I forgot where I was going with this sentence. <laughs> so I look like a fucking idiot right now. But because I was willing to look like an idiot, um, I, I was able to at least say something. Um, so that's the thing, I just you know, to kinda, oh, oh yeah, that's what I was gonna do. See, I circle back, eventually we'll get there. Um, it's, I make fun of myself in the process. Yes. Like one of my typical things to do, which is not a ploy, it's absolutely honest, someone will come up to me and be really, really nervous, and I'll be like, I know, they'll be like, I'm really shy, and I'm like, me too, actually. Believe it or not, I'm actually really, really shy. All of this is a coping mechanism for my shyness. I am not naturally gregarious. I had to learn to be, because it's the jump. Um, I love it, but it takes a lot of effort. It doesn't just, I can't just be like, hey, you, I'm awesome, let's talk. I, I don't, I'm not that person. I've known very few people that are that person. I think that's just a role we give ourselves to get through social interactions that we wouldn't otherwise propel ourselves into. Um, so I know Jerry does the same thing. Because mm -hmm. we're people. People. Persons. Persons. Humans. Humans. Well, 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 well mostly there's, humans. There's a reason I like the word person. Uh, because it comes from persona. And persona is not you. Persona is the mask that an actor wears, you see. In ancient Greek tragedy, that was uh, <laughs> and Yeah, and, and, and that's what makes a person, uh, but not a human, you know what I mean? But we're all humans. Uh, and yeah, self-deprecation, I love self-deprecation because it's easy for me. All I have to do is wake up, look in the mirror, and go, I got this. <laughs> uh, you know, and I just have to go, okay, now I remember why I'm a voice actor. And go about my day. Uh, you see, that's how that's done. And it doesn't bother me. It's a, I've seen this face for a long time. Uh, but it's, it's important to, to be able to go, you know, oh, shucks, thank you, thank you very much, but oh, don't worry about it. It's, you know, to comfort someone. I've had a few people today 
come up to the table for autographs and they're shaking. They're like, are you okay? Why are you shaking? Do you need some sugar? Or, you know, <laughs> you had too something much. like that. Yeah, you had too much sugar, not enough sugar. Uh, is meth a thing up here? <laughs> uh, all of these questions. But, but the, the point being that, that if I go, are you okay? And, and they go, I'm just nervous. I go, oh, that's, don't be. I'm just a person. I'm just a dude. Some, uh, just a jerk with a sharpie. That's who I am right now. And even saying something like that, generally you can notice them calm down a little bit right in front of you. And, and, and it's not, it's, it's this thing of, oh, I don't have to be intimidated. He's, he's okay. He doesn't, he doesn't need me to tell him how great I think he is. Uh, you know, and, which is true. I don't need that from anyone. From any of you, because I know how crazy. <laughs> I'm waiting for you guys to catch up with me. <laughs> so you all know how friggin' great I am. I'm pretty amazing. I'm a big deal. It's true. It's, it's not, none of that is true. But, but again, uh, he just doesn't know it. Even, I, guarantee, I guarantee, even us behaving this way, talking about conversation, I bet most of you will have a different reaction uh, to us and with us should you see us in the hallway passing by. And that is the biggest reason, uh, just about every convention, I do a single panel where it's just me, and the rules are, ask me anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be about anime. Most of the time I don't want it to be about anime. Uh, because by the time that panel is done, people walk by in the hall, and instead of, excuse me, Mr. Joel, can I, it's, hey, Jerry. <laughs> And, and that is exactly where I want to be. That is, that is comfortable for me at these things. What do you say we have about half an hour left in the panel? Heck yeah. Do you want to open it up to those kinds of questions? Heck yeah. What, what are the rules of those questions? Are there rules to these questions? Uh, just, you know. Personal stuff. Personal stuff. Not it could be anything. Whatever, whatever suits your comfort level. Uh, I would ask that we keep it somewhat clean because there <laughs> may be some younger folks in here and we've probably blown that rule a couple times already. But let's not do it anymore. <laughs> How about that? Let's make a committed effort to yes. not to be We'll all we try know. together. Yeah. Um, ask us real yeah. stuff. Ask us Peter dirty. questions. You don't have to be entertaining. You don't have to be cute. Just be real. I see one right here. Go for it. What life lesson did we learn the hard way? That's a good That's one. A good question. We could spend the next 30 minutes on that. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Um, your friends are not always your friends. The people you think are your friends are not always your friends. Now that doesn't mean you can't treat them with respect. It doesn't mean you can't treat them like a friend. Uh, you will probably find out down the road that some of them weren't really your friends. Um, I know, it's a sad thing, it's a little bit sad, but you are going to encounter it in your life at some point. Uh, the best thing I think to do is just be the best friend that you can be to them. And uh, that way, whenever they show their true colors, you can just go, ah, I knew I was the better friend anyway. <laughs> you, go, you go about your life. Uh, that's a good one. I think, Oh, this is going to really bring the room down, but I guess it is hard life lessons, and life can be really hard, but I think the hardest life lesson that I learned, um, just having to go through it, was that it's quite possible to fall out of love with someone, and to be like someone that you loved dearly and would have given your life for, you suddenly wake up one morning and go, I just don't feel that spark anymore, and I've tried to recapture it, and it's just not there, and I beat myself up for it for years, thinking, no, nah, it's me, I'm, I'm, I'm at fault here, I've, I've lost touch, and it just flew. We're just two human beings who loved each other at one time and who simply grew out of each other. It happens. It doesn't mean we're bad people. It doesn't mean that we're being mean to each other. It just means we're, we're not who we were when this journey started, and now we'd be better off separating. Um, that was a hard lesson. There was a lot of anger, a lot of bitterness, a lot of tears, a lot of, uh, a lot of laughing, surprisingly. Um, and it was funny. I was, I was with somebody for 12 years, and, and we met at a very young age. Uh, well, young, I mean, like... We were very different people. You're a very different person at 23 than you are at 35. Amen. Um, and we just, and, and that person was with me before I had this career, and so they kind of witnessed that change. And it, this career changed me. It made me a different person. It made me uh, someone that, that my partner just uh, couldn't 
not, I don't want to say couldn't keep up with because that implies that he was behind in some way, but it was more like he just was like, this isn't what I signed up for. I don't, I don't, I don't know that I can do this. And, and he didn't know how to be honest about that, so he just kind of kept it kind of hoping that one day I would, I would get back to what I was, and I was waiting for him to catch up and all that. And then we eventually decided to admit, like, we just don't love each other anymore. Like, I love you as a person and as a friend, and we have a history, and I'll always honor that, but I don't, I'm not in love, in love which is a weird thing to say. But I'm like saying it like that. We still love each other, but our love is no good in person anymore. Like it's we spoiled. It there was, was an expiration date. Now it yeah. smells funny. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes love smells funny. And that was a hard lesson to learn. Is like I think uh, most everyone goes through this at some point. Like you will, you may fall out of love with someone that at one time you your whole life was about. And I, you may convince yourself to stay with it for longer than you should because you feel like the bad person for not having those feelings anymore. Um, and I will say, if you ever do find yourself in that situation, don't be a dick. Don't be like, I don't love you bye. There goes the rule again. <laughs> none of the, oh, I break those rules all the time. Um, but it's important to let the other person down gently. I mean, because they may still love you very much and be completely surprised that you didn't that you don't have those feelings anymore. So you have to be adult about it. But it's really hard on both of you to stay in something that's not working anymore. So you have to be honest with each other. And that was a big life lesson for me. Especially being a gay man, I was in a relationship and I was small, grew up in small town Texas, so did he. So we felt kind of an obligation to stay together because we didn't want to admit, admit that two gay men can't make it work. Which is ridiculous, of course two gay men can. You know, two gay men can? <laughs> two gay men can. But we felt like we felt this this weird responsibility, and so we stayed with it longer than we should have. And now I'm with someone that I love very dearly, and I, you know, we we're very adult with each other. And hey, we may grow to hate each other too in ten years. I don't know. <laughs> Those of you under the age of twenty, change the oil in your car. <laughs> Seriously, you think I'm joking? I'm not joking. There there are rules for these things, and don't get me wrong, oils come a long way. All right, there, there, are, there are synthetic oils out there now. Let you go 5,000 miles before you change the oil. Six. Or more. Six, that could be six. Could be six. But change the oil because otherwise you're just going, I don't care about my car and I don't care if it blows up on the highway. Um, but you do. You don't know it yet, but you do. You may think you don't care. You care you're going to have a barbecue, but you won't care when it happens. And you'll be like, why did I let my, why did I think this was going to be okay? That's a hard life lesson. The other one is, uh, um, I know things can get passionate sometimes with the, with the young folks because they have so much energy. I believe that's what it is. Um, if you don't want the rest of your future decided for you, you should be careful. <laughs> Another life lesson. That's right. Being careful is generally a good idea in life. If you feel the read, if you feel the need to be a risk taker, you can be an artist. It's kind of a safe yeah. space within which to take risks that don't cost you the rest of your life. You can experiment. You can pretend to be someone who takes risks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's always fun. All right, who's got another question? I think your hand was up. The glasses, and you've got a green shirt and red hair. Uh, I was wondering, within your industry, what's one of the biggest, say, sacrifices you've had to make for your career, or biggest challenges you had to overcome? Within your industry or what you do? Um, <laughs> there's, at least at the beginning for me, the first time I ever went to a, a convention, for example, I, I had no idea what to think about myself uh, because I had never experienced anything like that before where people were like, oh my God, I love this thing you did. And to me, I'm going, what did I do? <laughs> what did, what do you think I did? And you know, oh, the the voice you did for this character. And I'm like, oh, that I I I like doing that. Like I just I did that because it was fun. What do you you know? And and then after a while, you start going to a few of these, and you're like, they treat me really well at this thing. I must be pretty darn cool. Uh, and then reality kicks in, <laughs> and and you you understand that look, I'm only cool when I'm in in the convention space. That's the only time I matter to anyone, for the most part. No, 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 no. I don't mean it like that. Uh, I just mean, I just mean, if I thought that I could go out in public and, and, and get the attention of a crowd even this size, I'd be doing it all the time. 
uh, but I can't because they don't care. Uh, yeah. So you have to remember it's a it's a it's a niche market, and and uh, you know we are all very appreciative that that you guys like what we do because you don't have to listen to dubs at all. Uh, and, and many of the shows are quite fine in Japanese. I, I, they are. Uh, subtitled. Uh, they're great shows. Either way. Um, so the fact that you even care is cool <laughs> for us. Um, you, I don't know. So you sacrifice a little bit of your sanity. Oh, that's just acting in general. That's true. <laughs> that's probably true. I... I think for me, um, one of the big sacrifices, I mean, there's always the, the, the usual sacrifices. You sacrifice a certain measure of security in, in a business like this because it's not like other jobs. You're, you are solely responsible for there are what no you do. Guarantees there are that no you're going to get another part. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, you still have to go into audition all the time. So you, you sacrifice a great deal of time chasing after the opportunities to work, which isn't even the same as work because it's, I mean, it is the job, but you're not getting paid for it. You get you audition for like what the average is about 100 auditions before you land one piece of work and so that's weeks and weeks and weeks you may go long stretches of time where there's nothing and you have to support yourself by taking a job at this retail store for a little while while, while you wait for the dry spell. It's, it's a different kind of life than having a, a quote unquote safe, secure 9 to 5 job with a 401k and, and health insurance benefits. <sighs> <sighs> anyway, <laughs> uh, so those, those are, but those are the usual sacrifices for anything that's creative because you learn it's a creative job. Everyone is creative or wants to be, and so those are the jobs everybody wants. So competition is really, really stiff. Uh, but for me specifically as an actor, I think the big sacrifice was having to sacrifice my sense of ownership for the characters I play. They're not mine. Um, I don't. They're yours. Um, I'm not, uh, I don't believe in characters uh, in the sense that I don't think of them as some magical cloak I put on and become this other person that you are wowed by or whatever. It's just me. It's just me doing my thing and I'm, it's me exploring different facets of my personality in a new context that I wouldn't normally have the chance to do. Uh, and that was a big thing because it, when I started out as an actor, uh, as a young man especially, because I've been acting since I was about nine. And the big appeal for acting was getting to be someone else. I wanted to be anyone other than Michael, because I didn't like Michael very much. I didn't see why anyone would want to pay any attention to Michael. I mean, he was boring and awkward and stuttered and was into stuff no one cared about. I mean, I was a kid, you know? I, I think we all feel that way when you're that age. So I never understand when people want to be children again. I'm like, you mean to get it right? Because it usually sucks. Um, <laughs> So I wanted to be an actor because I wanted to escape who I thought I was. And, and the more I explored the craft and the more I got into it, the more I realized, you know, it's actually, a, it's not a running away from, it's a going deeper in and having to realize this is just me, you guys. Every time you hear something that I've done or see me on stage or something, it's just me. It's just me uh, with writers. <laughs> um, and that's not to say, but that's the job, that's the craft is learning to be within this new imaginary context and that was a huge sacrifice because I have a drama teacher who's a, a, a coach who's really amazing and his prime philosophy is you know you are not the one telling the story the actor the writer the director they're not the ones telling the story the audience is telling the story to themselves based on what you give them that they respond to and the audience responds to what is real uh, it's why people don't want to work with animals because animals on have you ever seen a stage show and there's an animal <sighs> No one is paying the least bit of attention to any person on stage in that moment. They're always watching that dog or that horse or that lizard or that cat. I wonder if he'll poop on stage. Right? But that's, that's, the, that's the beauty of it, because you know that animal is not acting. That animal is not capable of being anything other than what it is. It is utterly present, and everything it's doing is a natural response to, what, to the stimuli it's giving. It's not performing, it's just being an animal. So it may poop on stage, it may bark at, at one of the cast members, and, it's, and it, we're riveted to it because, one, it's cute, but two, because it's real and anything can happen. Um, so learning that that's my job as an actor is to just be real with you and stop bullshitting and stop putting on masks and, and hiding behind characters and just being myself, that was a big sacrifice. It's very therapeutic, but it took a lot of work. And... Um, yeah, and, and that's not to say that, you know, putting on a mask or a persona is a fake you. I mean, cosplayers know this, too. You may put on these wonderful, beautiful outfits. You don't become someone else. It's just that the costume gives your personality permission to explore different facets of itself that it doesn't normally have the opportunity to do. That's the appeal of it. 
but it's you. It's still just, not just, but it's still you. It's important to, to learn that. That was my big sacrifice in this business, is learning that it's just me. I can't hide. If I want to be good at this, there's no hiding. And, and, and with that, sometimes you get lucky and you find out, hey, people actually like me better when I'm just me. What are yeah. the chances? Yeah. Who knew? That's all I had to do. All right. Uh, heck, yeah, I do. <laughs> Back there. Yes, you. Yeah. Well, yeah. sure. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so you have been, you guys are in an industry where you get to like talk a lot, yeah. And I know that you guys are just like a big famous but <laughs> Very. Uh, 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 before you were at the level that you are, did you ever come across a point where people you kind of get recognized by someone and they wouldn't really notice you, or you like? Talking about conversation, no one, I don't think anyone has ever recognized me from anything. Uh, no, 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 that is what I want. That is a good thing. Uh, there, matter of fact, this, this convention, I've had a few different people grill me on my accent. Uh, no, they have. Where are you from? Where are you from? And I, and, well, I live in Texas. Are you from Texas, though? No, I'm not. And, and I love that. I totally love that because I know what I sounded like as a child. And it was a whole different thing. <laughs> Let me tell you. Was, uh, I very easily could have grown up talking like this for the rest of my life. And I'm so happy that I did not. Uh, but it becomes another accent that I can grab onto whenever I need and, uh, you know, relate it to what I do. Now, we're never, I'm pretty sure there's never going to be an anime where I need that accent. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, anime. But, you know, occasionally we have people in anime that still retain their southern accent because you can't get rid of it. Yeah. And sometimes it works great, you know? Uh, Kenny, Green Kenny Green plays the part of uh, Dr. Sato in, in the new... Uh, Space Battleship Yamato, and and now that I've heard him do it with his Texas accent, uh, I can't imagine anyone else playing it. It's a good voice. It, it just works for some things. Some things it doesn't work for. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> I've never um, being recognized. Being recognized. I've had like in the early days, especially, I would go to cons and and people would not have any idea who I was, and I'd walk around, and I didn't know that. <laughs> I'd be like, well, surely they know. They asked me here. Uh, like, all of you collectively asked for the guest list. And I would go around and, like, I would see characters that were co uh, cosplayers that were cosplaying characters I voiced the dub of and be like, oh my god, can I get a picture? And they'd be like, yeah, I guess, weird. And then I'd walk away and I'd be like, ah. oh, they had no idea who I was. I just looked like a creepy guy. <laughs> um, that was weird. But occasionally, and it's, it's, I never expected it or anticipated or to be perfectly honest enjoy it when it happens but i have on occasion been recognized out in public away from a convention circuit now now you know we're all well enough known and you have a picture of me and, and, and jerry in the book so we know what we look like if i want to walk around the dealer's room and i did this today i just take off my glasses and none of you know it's me it's like where did michael go there he is it's like reverse clark kent superman thing uh, it's weird. It's weird. The glasses are, I'm just so average looking that without the glasses, there's yeah, just some dude, you know, whatever, but the glasses, it's the glasses! The secret, guys, that there is no J. Michael Tatum, it's just the glasses. <laughs> Jerry, put them on. This is gonna hurt. <laughs> he is now J. Michael Tatum. <laughs> so, so I'm really like a mall Santa. <laughs> J. Michael Tatum's helpers. Uh, but a couple of times I've been somewhere where like a fan has come up and recognized me in public. Uh, I don't know why. Um, it always seems to happen when I'm with my family. <laughs> and my family, who I love and who are very supportive and think it's cool in theory what I do, but who've never seen an anime or played a video game in their lives will be with me. Like The most recent example was we took my mom out for her birthday uh, a few months back. And we were all eating at this Tex-Mex place and having a good time. And while we're eating, I'm sitting there. My sister-in-law was sitting next to me. My nephew was on this side, and we're just kind of gabbing, catching up. And then my sister-in-law just kind of taps me on her shoulder. I'm like, what? And she looks at me, and she's like, mm! and she points behind her. And there is this, you know, probably 18-year-old girl going. <laughs> and I'm just 
like, oh shit. And I immediately go into like, you know, with my family, I'm like, ah, screw you, I don't know, whatever. I'm like, hi, how are you? <laughs> and, and she just wanted a picture and to say hi, and then, you know, and then she, off she went. She's very shy, but I mean, I, I applauded her bravery. I could not come up to a stranger and be like, can I get a picture with you? <laughs> Unless they were cosplaying a character at play. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, uh, but, you know, then she walked away, and I was like, and my sister-in-law was like, the hell was that? Was that one of your fans? Oh my god, get her back. I want to talk to her. You like this guy? Because my family, we all bust each other's chops constantly. So they were like, it was just an entree for them to just be like, you, oh man, we should buy her dinner. Come on, she loves you. Get her back to the table. I'm like, no, 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 please don't, please don't, please don't. Because um, there's so many things I can't, I can't you know. Uh, so it happens, it's happened like maybe once or twice in public, and it's weird because I'm not expecting it. At a con, you know, there's, there's a level of expectation because that's what I'm here for, and you know, you know the look for me because we're here, but in public, I'm a very shy dumbass in public. Like, I'm not, I'm super awkward, I am not uh, on, I don't engage with people very often. I'm trying to get better about that because I want to, like, talk to people and be like, how's your day? Like, really, how's your day going? Like, you know, talk to whoever's making my coffee or, or the person that's you know, in front of me in line somewhere. Like, I try to be more engaged. But most of the time, I'm on my phone because I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> so if someone comes up to me at a con, I'm like, hey, how's it going? And if someone comes up to me, not at a con, I'm like, <laughs> I mean, hi. <laughs> I, I rarely leave my house. <laughs> That's how that goes. I would rarely leave my house, too. And now I have a French bulldog, so when I go out, all the attention is on him, which is great. Because he's a dog, and I disappear. <laughs> Just like if we were on stage. No one cares what I have to say when my dog is next to me. He's a French bulldog, so he's like... <sighs> Constantly, I love him. So he's like, he's the great deflector. I'm pretty sure the only way people would recognize me is if I committed a crime. <laughs> so, and at that point, I think it would be, oh yeah, now you now you know who I am, because I could never get away with it. I'm too easy to describe. Uh, there's so many things going on here that it'd be like, well, you know, they'd describe me and they'd go, there's only one dude that looks like that. <laughs> Sorry, it's me. <laughs> Let's pick another question. Yes, another question. Mm -hmm. Right there. Yes, you. Okay. Um, as someone who considers themselves good at conversation, what would you say your opinion is for engaging someone who might be struggling to, you know, talk? Who might someone who might be struggling? Um. Well, if they're struggling physiologically with speaking, like if they have a speech impediment or a stutter, the best thing is to just be patient with them and to not display your discomfort. Because it can be awkward to be talking to someone who stutters. I, I, I stuttered for many, many years as a child, and I, it's just a natural human reaction sometimes for the person to be like, oh, I don't really know how to handle you know, speaking to someone with an impediment, and, and the other person is very sensitive to that. Um, so it is really important for you to respect that person and to just be patient. Do not finish their sentences for them, because that's really, it's that's annoying. respectful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, if, but if it's just someone who's just, you know, but who doesn't necessarily suffer, uh, suffer from a speech impediment, but who just has trouble talking, um, again, getting back to be interested in them. To kind of, you know, you can always ask them questions that aren't yes or no. Like, ask them questions. Like with Jenny, we, you know, I asked her, like, is it true that it's harder to be a veterinarian because you have so many species you have to diagnose and you can't? That opened up something and she started talking. Um, if you, if you're, Get at that person enough. If you ask them enough questions, eventually they'll it'll start a narrative. Then the burden of conversation may largely fall on you for a little while, but eventually you'll get at something they want to talk about. And if they don't, then you just have to respect their space and say, well, it's nice talking to you, and you have to get out of that situation. And another thing he mentioned uh, when Jenny was up here, um, <laughs> she just gets a kick out of her name. Being <laughs> but she was part of something, and it was poignant, and it was great. Uh, was, was that uh, he was... Once we made the initial asking of, hey, what do you do? What are you into? Uh, he used what little he knew, uh, very little, about being a veterinarian or things, <laughs> something he's heard before. I cannot tell you how invaluable that can be uh, to get someone talking. Um, and what that means is, even before the conversation, kind of, you know, not size them up, but pay attention. <laughs> pay attention to everything you see. Uh, any clue that you can get about something they like, maybe it's something they're wearing, 
Uh, maybe they dress in a certain style that you go, well, I know the people that usually dress like that are into these things, that might help. You know, little things like that can go a long way uh, to getting someone to open up. So, you know, pay, pay attention. Pay attention to that person and, and see them as a, as a completed thing. Uh, that, is, that the only thing is missing is your beautiful conversation. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and, and be genuinely interested. Um, I, I teach an acting class from time to time, and one of the things I try to get at with my students is if you're in public and a stranger comes to talk to you, um, we all instinctively know the difference between someone that's really in, like really interested and someone who's just trying to sell us on something and trying pretending to be interested as kind of an entrance into a greater conversation whereby they will benefit because they've, you know, hey, would you like to buy some Amway? Or I don't even know if they have that up here. Um, but it's a really bullshit sales, sales thing that strangers try to like, pull. hey, would you like to join this club where you get to sell stuff to people and you get to hire people and like whatever. But strangers will come up to you yeah. and say things like, wow, I really like that jacket. And I'm like, oh, screw you. No, you don't. You just want to sell me on something. You can hear, you can tell from their tone that they're they're full of it, that they're, 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 there's an ulterior motive. Um, if, on the other hand, that you really just like that person's jacket because they're wearing this awesome piece of clothing, uh, you can be, you can respond to that instinct to be like, oh, I really like that jacket. Like, you're sitting right here, and I will tell you, I genuinely love your cosplay. That's not me trying to say, like, I love your cosplay. Have you given any thought to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? <laughs> but that, you know, but you can hear the difference between me being honest they did not take our class. Um, <laughs> um, and someone just being generally, if something about that person fascinates you and it doesn't fall within awkward territory, like, you know, hey, nice rack. <laughs> um, you know, use it. They can tell instinctively if it's something that, that you're really into and they'll respond to it with a thank you. Okay, okay. We got you. No, we're fine. We're fine. No, you see what she did? She did everything the right way.